Hi, Elliot Recaps here. Today, I'm gonna tell a movie called Vikingdom. The movie is about Thor, the Norse god of thunder, who wants to find out his Mjolnir. The movie begins with the fact that on the battlefield, where thousands of soldiers lost their lives, the wounded Eric says goodbye to his brother and transfers power over the kingdom. Meanwhile, Thor took on a human form and descended to Earth to declare himself the conqueror of the whole world and remind people of who the real god is. Having found the abbey that holds the necklace of Mary Magdalene, Thor, along with an army of northerners, attacks him. Using a numerical advantage, he destroys everyone in his path and takes possession of the artifact, crucifying the priest on the cross. Having received a second life thanks to the charms of Freya in love, Eric hunts a bear in the forest. After hitting him several times with arrows, the Viking uses the clothes as a distraction. The animal smells and falls into the trap of Eric, who attacked him with a knife. A little later, the powerful sorcerer Frey, the brother of the sorceress who is in love with Eric, visits the Viking's house. He reports the appearance of Thor on Earth and assures the Viking that only he can stop the god of thunder. Realizing that it is impossible to act alone, Eric goes into the forest to enlist the support of his faithful friend and warrior Sven. Having gone on a hike, the men meet the merchant and free the guy whom he held captive. A few hours later, Eric the Bloody and Sven arrive in Osberg to meet the red bearded King Carl. On the way to him, they are met by an offended merchant who decided to take revenge on the Vikings who let his slave go. Enlisting the support of several thugs, Idas attacks Eric and his comrade, ordering them to take the lives of both. Opponents outnumber the Vikings in numbers, but not in strength, so they suffer defeat. At a difficult moment, the freed Yang comes to the aid of Eric and Sven, so that they quickly go to the king. Meeting with the red-bearded Carl, Eric gets to know that the druid Alukan left his lands a few days ago. Enemy warriors attacked them, and having ruined many lives, kidnapped the sorcerer, hiding in their lands. In the evening, the king gathers people at the bar to introduce Eric to them. A man goes on a dangerous campaign and he needs volunteer fighters ready for bloody battles. At first no one dares to join the ranks of Eric, but soon the situation changes. He is joined by Olaf, Gregor, Henrik, Oric, Bernard, and other warriors ready to do anything for fun, profit, and justice. Also, a girl named Brynna wants to join the squad, but Eric refuses her because war is not a woman's business. The next morning, the warriors get ready to go, and it turns out that the only way to get to the goal is to use the drakkar belonging to Brynna. Eric is unhappy that the girl will sail with them, but they have no choice because this is the only ship that is preparing to sail. Meanwhile, the northern kings report back to Thor, saying that everything is going according to plan and no one can stop them from achieving their goals. A little later, an unknown person comes to the god of thunder and reports important news. Thor orders his subjects to gather at least fifty fighters in order to advance to Gotaland. After being on the road for several days, Eric and his party arrive at the lands of Gotaland, where an earthen druid is being held in a hanging metal cage. Once on the shore, the Vikings are surprised, because there is not a soul around, and it is suspiciously quiet. Eric asks to be extremely careful, because it could be an ambush. It soon becomes clear that he did not lose, because hundreds of local residents are attacking a group of Vikings that landed on the shore. In an unequal battle, Eric, Sven, Brynna, and Yang destroy dozens of opponents who stand in their way. At the same time, the detachment also suffers minor setbacks since not all fighters manage to stay alive. The king of these lands does not intend to calmly look at the loss of his subjects and also enters the fray. Heflair sends to the other world of one of the Vikings before fighting the bloody Eric. Being stronger, the Viking without much difficulty punishes the enemy and sends him to the next world with one precise blow of the sword. After defeating all enemies, Eric and Brynna go to the fortress to free the druid and ask him for help. Having descended to the ground, the sorcerer gains strength, after which he warns that warriors are advancing from the north, surpassing the group in strength and numbers. Saying goodbye to the fallen warriors, Eric sets their bodies on fire, after which a group of Vikings sails off in search of the magic horn. In the evening, Thor and his men arrive at the village and learn from the last survivor that Eric was there. The northern kings offer to give chase, but the god of thunder sees no point in this, because the enemy himself will seek a meeting with him. At night, the Viking ship finds itself at a strange stretch of water, literally glowing from the bottom. Alcuin reports that just here are the gates to the place where the horn is hidden. To search for him, 
Eric must dive into the water and swim as deep as he can. At the same time, the druid warns the man that the land is guarded by the blind dog Harem, which has monstrous power. He does not see anything, but hears everyone who dares to approach him. Taking into account all the advice and possible threats, Eric dives into the water and swims to the very bottom. At some point, he sees hallucinations, after which he finds himself in the underworld. Once in the crystal cave, the Viking quietly and slowly walks past the sleeping dog, trying not to wake him up. A little later, he notices the petrified silhouettes of people and, believing that they do not pose a threat, continues to move. It turned out that these afterlife creatures only pretended to be inanimate. At some point, they get stopped by the Lord of the Underworld, in whose person the Viking recognizes his father. The man disappoints Eric and informs him that he is not his own father, as someone used his appearance to conceive a son. Despite this, the father decides to help the Viking and reports that the horn is hidden near the gates of souls. Going there, Eric meets hundreds of golden beauties, beckoning him to them. Noticing the horn in their hands, the Viking tries to take it, but the girls lure him deeper and deeper. At some point, Eric manages to grab a magical artifact, but the gates of souls won't let him go. The girls continue to drag the Viking to them, and he would have stayed with them forever if not for his father. Having pulled his son out of the gates of souls, the deceased decides to bring him out of the underworld. Meanwhile, one of the members of the militant group offers to sail away, as a day has passed, and Eric still has not returned. He tries to sow panic and fear, but no one supports his idea. Even a criminal who took the lives of children and women is not ready to leave a leader in trouble. In fact, this man is not as bad as they say about him, because he was a good warrior. One day, the enemies took his family away from him, and, having lost his mind, the man began to take revenge on them, taking the lives of not only soldiers, but also their wives, sons, and daughters. Leaving the cave, Eric notices that the dog is not in the place where he lay earlier. It turned out that he lured the Viking into a trap and was not going to release it. The father again decides to help his son and, having wounded him, smears himself with blood to attract the attention of the animal and allow Eric to escape. Sailing out and returning to the ship, the leader of the Vikings learns from the druid that he needs to head to the sacred circle of stones. Before the bloody eclipse, he must blow the horn in the presence of Thor, as a result of which he will return to his divine kingdom, having lost his human appearance and the ability to be on earth. Before doing this, Eric decides to visit his home, because they need a whole army that can resist the northerners. One-eyed Yorick welcomes the former lord of the lands and escorts him to Biotric, his brother and new king of Jomsburg. Realizing that it is not safe for the whole group to leave, Eric asks the druid Yang and Brynna to stay on the ship and wait for his go-ahead. Biotric is not happy to see his brother in his native land, as he gave the kingdom a heyday, turning the mighty Vikings into mercenaries performing dangerous tasks around the world. He suspects that Eric decided to seize power and sit back on the throne. The brother admits that he is not interested because he is waiting for a mortal battle with Thor, in which he needs not only strength, but also allies. Not believing a single word of Eric, Biotric orders to capture his brother and his group by searching their personal belongings. The king's soldiers take the captives to the basement and lock them in a cage. Eric is beaten and interrogated to reveal everything he has in mind. One-eyed Yorick is outraged by the king's actions and still respects Eric, so he returns to the ship and informs Brynna that their leader is being held hostage. Yorick is ready to lead the trio to the castle, but he cannot attack his people so Yang and Brynna can only rely on their own strength. To prevent part of the group from being seen, Alquin uses magic and creates a fog. Hearing the approach of the guards, they put out the torches and hide behind the ledges of the rocks, after which they attack the men and send them to the next world. After finding the captives, Yang and Brynna free the group and an exhausted Eric. Instead of running away, the Viking destroy the guards and return to the royal palace to see his brother again. He reproaches Beatrix of betrayal, realizing that his brother sold himself to Thor. Immediately the guards again arrest the group, since Alquin is a traitor who lured them into a trap in order to transfer fate to the king of these lands.
Biotric orders Eric's execution and the members of his group thrown off the cliff, but the guards do not. Having sworn allegiance to Eric, they take the Viking and the warriors to the village so that they can rest and gain strength. A little later, Brynna visits Eric to help treat his wounds. She fell in love with a man and is ready to spend the night with him, but the Viking does not need it. He swore in love to the one and only and does not want to betray her. Seeing Freya in the mirror, Erica learns that the sorceress resurrected him, promising higher powers that they would never meet again and never know love. Using Brynna's body to communicate, the sorceress heals Eric's wounds and kisses him, asking him to forget her and open his heart. Having listened, the Viking kisses Brynna and, reciprocating her feelings, spends the night in the arms of the girl. In the morning, several hundred warriors go over to Eric's side and are ready to set out with him. Faithful servants visit the king and realize that Biotric was poisoned, depriving him of his life. Meanwhile, Thor admits that he wants to sort things out with the Almighty and show who is the main god on earth. He does not care about mortals, and the victims do not frighten him. One of the northerners doesn't like it and tries to fight Thor, but suffers a crushing defeat. The magical Mjolnir can only be picked up by one in whose veins divine blood flows, so the man loses his life. After being on the road for several days, Eric's army comes to the magic circle of stones. The army of northerners is five times larger, but it is impossible to delay, as the bloody eclipse is about to begin. Motivating the warriors with a pep talk, Eric orders an attack on the weaker flank. Divided into several groups, his army alternately enters into battle with the northerners, inflicting crushing blows on them. The Vikings also lose their best fighters, but continue to fight for a higher cause. Olaf, Gregor, Auric, and others give their lives for Eric, believing that he can defeat Thor. At the same time, Thor receives the coveted horn and realizes that he has collected all the necessary artifacts. The armies continue the battle, during which all available weapons are used. The kings of the north understand that they are defeated, but no one dares to tell the god of thunder about it. Realizing that they can no longer serve him, the northerners flee. Thor enters the magic circle of stones, and having laid out three artifacts, summons lightning. Eric also appears here to thwart the god of thunder. Before entering the fray, Thor informs the Viking that he is his real father and divine blood flows in him. Not wanting to recognize his own father, Eric attacks God, but turns out to be weaker. Sven, Brynna, and Yang hold off Thor with all their might, but fail to overpower him. Eric continues to fight with the God, but he decides to plunge the blade into him. Saving her beloved, Bryn stands between the men and Thor strikes her with a mortal blow. Angry, Eric breaks the God's hand, and having gained the upper hand, gives a signal to the magic horn. It turns out that this was all Frey's deception, as the powerful sorcerer dreams of destroying humanity for its belief in Christianity. There comes a bloody eclipse and a portal opens, connecting the worlds. At some point, Thor notices that the horn is crumbling and cannot understand the reason. It turned out that Alcuin understood Frey's true interests and gave away a fake artifact. Frey and Thor go to their world, and the gates close, peace is restored on Earth. Brynna falls asleep forever in the arms of her beloved and asks to be given water. Saying goodbye to the fallen, Eric and his team float boats with the bodies of warriors by sea, after which they burn them. From that day on, Eric, Young, Sven, and others are not only Vikings who abandoned the old faith in favor of Christianity, but also warriors who protect artifacts. We hope you enjoyed watching, friends. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. See you soon.